In the last video, we prepared our shape to animate, and now I've got that star on my composition. I've renamed the layer star, and I'm just about ready to work with these transforms that I want to share with you. But we have one more thing we have yet to do, and that is, if you'll notice, if I were to rotate this star, it doesn't rotate from the center of the star. It rotates from the fulcrum point, which happens to be offset. It's offset because when you draw within After Effects, it places that fulcrum point or registration point on the middle of the stage instead of in the middle of the object. So before we start, I want to move that, and the tool I need is right next to the Shape tool. It's called the Pan Behind Anchor Point tool. And if I click on that, it will allow me to move this point to the center of my star. Now if I want to get it perfectly in the center, I'll come up here and click on Snapping and then it should snap right to the middle of my star. Okay, now I really am ready to go. And we're about to do probably the most important thing that we will do all semester, and that is to create keyframes. Keyframes are a big concept that you need to really understand to be able to utilize not only After Effects, but almost any animation motion type software. So, you can see down here under Transform, I can turn the arrow, and there are five different characteristics. We're going to focus on all but Anchor Point. And to make our very first keyframe, we just click on this little stopwatch. They call it a stopwatch. And that will give us our first keyframe. So you'll see that we have a bright blue diamond here, and that these have turned blue. And also, on our timeline now, we've got these little diamonds. Those are representatives of our keyframes. So notice too that when these are lit up, I'm right, my uh, playback head here is right on top of the keyframes, and when I move off of the keyframes, it's, they are not lit up, but these arrows are. So I can click those arrows to navigate to make sure that I am exactly on a keyframe. That's going to become important later. Now for some reason, Adobe created this situation where you have to click on the stopwatch to make your first keyframe. But from here on in, you, you don't want to click on that stopwatch again, because if you click on it, it will remove every keyframe that's in that layer, which could be uh, a pretty awful experience for you. So just know that about those stopwatches. That's pretty important. Okay, so we have our first keyframe. And as I said, a keyframe is important because what it does is it indicates that there's very specific parameters about the position or the scale or the rotation, etc. So we've started out with pretty much everything at default, which would be 100% scale, zero rotation, 100% opacity, and this position is just the X and the Y coordinates. X going across this way, and Y going up and down. So I'm going to change my tool over to the black arrow tool, the selection tool, and I'm just going to start with position. So I'm going to work with seconds for the most part. So let's say I want to go to three seconds, and at that point I want my star to be on the other side of the stage. I can create a new keyframe in a few different ways. Also, if I need it to be specifically at three seconds, I can see right here it shows three zero zero, so that's three seconds. So here I am at three seconds. If I want to, I can just drag my star, and when I do that, because I've changed position, it automatically gives me a keyframe. And so now I can use these white arrows to jump back and forth between those two keyframes. And if I were to play, it would slowly move from one keyframe to the other keyframe. And notice that my playback head continues to move. My movie is still playing, but we're past where there's any motion. So, that is a position change. 
one keyframe that says have it on the left, the second keyframe that says have it on the right, and then this line that you see here is actually a Bezier curve and all the little dots on there indicate all the frames that we have in here. So I'm going to bend my line a little bit and you can see that I can have a curved line and now my star will move on that curved line. Okay, let's just go down the line here. Next we'll take a look at scale. So right now it's at 100%. Let's just match up our keyframes. I'm going to go back to three seconds and let's say I want to increase this up to 200%. I can do it with sliders. I can also type it in. So now it's going to follow that S curve and it's going to get bigger. All right, our third property is rotation, which is why I chose a star, by the way, and not a circle. It's kind of hard to see the rotation on a circle. But we are at zero, and what this represents is number of revolutions. So if I know I wanted it to go fully around one or two times, I could just change that, and it would do it. Or I could do it by degrees. So let me undo that, and let's leave this keyframe alone. Let's again go to our second keyframe. I'm using the arrows so that I match up all the properties in this case. And let's say I want it to go 90 degrees. There we go. And again, you could type that in. It'd probably be a lot quicker. So now, as it's moving from one place to the other, it's getting larger and it's also turning. So the last of the characteristics that I want to share with you is opacity. And it starts out at 100%, so let's have it go at the 3 second mark down to 50%. And this time I will type it, so 50. And as you might expect, it's going to play, getting larger, turning around, and changing opacity. So. Those are the four characteristics I'd like you to start to experiment with. You don't need to just have two keyframes. You can add as many as you like. So, for example, uh, I can now say I want this to come down here or jump around, do whatever, change scale. Let's say I want it to now change only one direction, maybe squash it. And I'm going to come and randomly put a different rotation go the other direction and bring it back up to 100%. So don't feel that you need to do exactly what I've done, but I'd like you to just try and get a handle on these four characteristics. See you in the next video.